this example, we're going to use supply and cost curves to show how monopolies will underproduce and overcharge um, the products that they create and um, cause deadweight loss and a loss of efficiency in a market um, as they move away from competition. So let's go ahead and get started with this example. Um, the only thing we're going to start with are these two equations here. We have a demand curve that, goes, that starts at 40 and goes down. Um, and then we have the total cost for this monopolist. Um, this is one firm that has total control over the market. So their total cost is this Q squared plus 140 thing. Um, so according to the rule for maximizing profit, um, the way you maximize profit, max profit, is when marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So that is the goal of this firm. They want to figure out where marginal costs and marginal revenue cross. So given these two formulas that we have with demand and total cost, we need to figure out marginal revenue and marginal cost. Um, we can figure out marginal cost fairly easily because we already have total cost. And so marginal cost is just the derivative of total cost. Um, so we just do a little bit of calculus to do that. So we're going to say P equals um, we bring this exponent down, so it's going to be 2q to the first power, or we don't need the first power because it's just um, q by itself. And then this 140 disappears. And so our marginal cost is that, just p equals 2q. That's pretty easy. Um, so we've figured that part out. Um, next, we need to figure out revenue. And right now, all we have is demand. Um, we don't have any revenue here. There's no total revenue formula. But um, what we can do is use a little bit of algebraic trickery to figure out total revenue. So if you remember, the formula for total revenue is price times quantity. Um, you multiply the number of things that you sell by the price, and that's how much money you bring in as a firm. So given that, we can actually take this demand curve, because we know that that is P, and we can plug it into this P right here. So what we're left with is negative q plus 40, because we know that that is p, and then that is times q. So we've gotten rid of one of our variables. We've gotten rid of the p here. So we can simplify this down. We can move the q to each of these. So it's going to be equals negative q squared plus 40q. And that is our total revenue. So we have a total revenue formula now. Um, but what we care about most is marginal revenue because that's where we need to see where that crosses um, with marginal cost and where they're equal to each other. So to figure out marginal revenue, we take the derivative of total revenue, which means we bring this 2 down, so it's going to be negative 2q plus, and then we take this, we take the 1, so it's 1 times 40, and then the q goes away, so plus 40. And that is our marginal revenue formula. Okay. Which means we can now do the math to figure out where the ideal price and quantity is. Um, if we take marginal cost, um, which was 2q, and marginal revenue, which is the negative 2q plus 40, we can use algebra to solve for that, um, which is fairly easy here, plus 2q plus 2q. Um, so we're left with 40 equals 4q divided by 4 divided by 4 best quantity is 10. If we don't want to do all of that algebra, we can actually plug these things in directly to Desmos. So let's go ahead and do that because that's going to be easier than doing the algebra. So our marginal cost was y equals 2x. Um, so if you remember, economists use p and q. p is y, q is x. And so we can translate that here into Desmos. So there is our marginal cost, and it goes up. Next, we have our marginal revenue, which was y equals negative 2x plus 40. And if we zoom out a little bit, um, so we can see where they actually cross, the ideal price for this firm um, to maximize their profit is right here at $10. And that's what we found when we did the algebra. And if we plug that 10 back into one of these equations, it'll tell us the ideal price. So they should be making 10 units of something. We'll call it books again. So they should be making, or yeah, they should be making 10 books and charging $20 for those books. And that is the profit maximizing price right here at this point. Um, 
but that, that's good for the firm. That's going to be where they make the most money. But that does not reflect what the demand is. Right now, this is just the, the marginal revenue that they get from just selling on their own. But it doesn't take into account aggregate demand. So if we add the demand curve to here, um, if you remember from the, the paper, we had y equals negative x plus 40. That is the demand. So what that means is out in society, people demand, um, or people are willing to pay um, different amounts of money here. They'd be willing to pay um, $10 for 30 books. They'd be willing to pay $12 for 28 books. Um, the ideal market price where um, the demand meets the marginal cost here, or the supply, is this point right here. The best point um, that should exist out in the world is you should be selling books for $13.33, and you should be selling 26 books. And that's going to be the best social um, cost, um, or the social price for society there. But what you end up with is, um, this firm, if they want to maximize their profit, they should make fewer books for cheaper. So at first glance, it looks like this is okay. Um, there's fewer books in the world, which stinks for people who want to buy more books, but if they want to maximize their profit, they only have to charge $20 for it, and so that's cheaper than 26, and they should, that, that's great. The issue though, is that people are willing to pay, like if we're only providing 10 books out in the world, people are willing to pay $30 for that. Um, if they have to pay 20, then that's not going to be too sad for them. That's going to be great. But they're willing to pay up to 30, which means this monopolist, what they're going to do is even though they only have to charge $20 for it, they're going to charge 30 because they can, because the market is going to pay up to $30 for it. So what you end up with is this triangle right here, where you get um, the market price should be 13 and 26. Um, the actual quantity and price is going to be lower and cheaper, but they're going to overcharge because they can, because people are willing to pay a higher price for that lower quantity. And so then that creates um, deadweight loss. It creates this triangle right here, which is bad for society. Um, that's a loss of efficiency. So if we want to be able to see all of the different shaded triangles and rectangles and figure out deadweight loss and all of that, um, it's easier to do that on paper instead of in Desmos um, because we can't do all of the shading and stuff in Desmos. So um, to do that, we're just going to draw um, a basic graph here. It's not going to be as accurate as Desmos. That doesn't really matter. Um, we're just going to write down whatever numbers we have from Desmos and translate that down to the paper here. So we have price and quantity here. We had a marginal cost curve or a supply curve that looked something like this. So here's our supply or marginal cost. We had a demand curve that looked something like this. So that is demand. And so where they intersect right here, that is the ideal quantity and price that society is demanding. So the ideal quantity was 13, and the ideal price was 26. And you can figure that out by just drawing these lines down, and that's um, where those things cross. So it's 13.333 and 26.666. Okay, so that is what society demands. Um, people would be totally happy to pay $26 per book and there would be 13 books out in the world. Um, but because this firm is a monopolist, they don't have to um, charge this price right here. If they want to maximize their profit, remember the formula for maximizing profit is marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So instead of looking at demand right here, this firm wants to look at its marginal revenue, which we figured out and we plotted looked something like um, this right here. That's the marginal revenue that they get. So for them to maximize profit, they're not going to produce at this point. They're going to produce at this point where marginal revenue and mar so marginal cost and marginal revenue cross right here. That is the best place for them to um, create if they want to maximize profit, which means that is only 10 books, and it's a price that is low. It's only $20. So they should be producing at that amount. But this is where the monopoly issue comes into play. The market, if there are only 10 books out in the world, people are willing to pay up to $30 for that. 
which means this firm can actually move the price down up from 20 to 30 and they're going to overcharge so what they end up doing is they underproduce so they're making fewer books and they overcharge they're um, changing the price of that because the market's willing to pay more for it so what that creates is a triangle which is dead weight loss and we could use algebra and geometry to figure out the actual area of this dead weight loss we're not going to do that in this video um, in the step-by-step um, -step instructions um, down below this video, I show how to do that. Um, it's really just figuring out the base, which is this 13.3 to 10, so that's going to be 3.333, and the height, which is this distance here. So if you can figure out that height, divide that by half, and then multiply it by 3.333, that will show you the area of that dead weight loss. Um, we can also figure out producer surplus and consumer surplus. So to figure out surpluses, we draw lines over to the side here. So here, um, this area right there is the producer surplus. And this area right here, this whole area, which is the rectangle plus this triangle, that is all, cons or all producer surplus now. When we talked about taxes, this rectangle here went to the government. When we talk about monopolies, this rectangle goes to the producer. So they get all sorts of bonus points and extra revenue and extra profit because they're a monopoly. Um, uh, per, or consumers are hurt by that. They lose a whole bunch of, of surplus, a whole bunch of good deal points, and there's a whole bunch of um, dead weight loss in society as a result. Um, you can figure out, again, the exact numbers for all of this if you just use some geometry um, to figure out the areas of the rectangle, the area of the triangle, the area of that triangle. You can figure out all of that. Um, but that is, again, the main story of why monopolies are bad. Um, the intuition, again, um, we'll just walk through it one last time because it's important. Um, we'll just do a simple one here without numbers. So here's our price. Here's our quantity. We have marginal cost goes up like that. Um, we have demand out in the world. And then we have the firm's own marginal revenue that looks like this. So... In theory, they should be producing this much stuff at that price because that's what society is demanding. That should be the market equilibrium. But because they want to maximize profit, they're going to be producing at this point, which is lower. So they're moving quantity down. Um, so quantity goes down, and that is sad. But the price is going to be cheaper because um, the price was up at this point. Now the price is lower. So in theory, that should be okay that there's less quantity because things should be cheaper. But because the market is willing to pay more money for fewer things, um, they will overcharge. They will move this up. So they start at this point. They should be producing this much. To maximize profit, they'll actually only produce this much, and then they'll overcharge. And so that is the process of the monopoly triangle here. They're going to underproduce, and they're going to overcharge. Um, and as a result, you get this section here, which is dead weight loss, and that makes society worse off. And when we talk about surpluses, um, the consumers get a smaller surplus, and the producers get all of that area. And that's great if you're a firm, because you get all of that extra bonus um, surplus, which is great for you.